HWS Theater presents Fault Lines Thick tan lines creep across a black stage floor in a black box theater devoid of scenery. The lines on the floor look like roots or possibly cracks in the foundation. Clusters of three to six empty gray chairs nestle intermittently throughout the space. The student actors will use these chairs throughout the performance. Two gray stools stand next to each other in a corner on the outer edge of the playing space. They will be used by the MCs to witness the performance. An exit sign is lit behind the stools. Elsewhere in the space, a large wooden crate is rooted to the floor, painted to look as though the roots have taken hold of it. It is crammed full of various fabrics, silk flowers, and other not yet discovered props used by the actors during the performance. The space is lit in cool blues that model on the floor as if shining through leaves. Starring. Hello, my name is Anthony Bray, and I'm a Puerto Rican and black male, curly hair, brown eyes, cargo camouflage pants, leather jacket, and graphic tee on. Hi, I'm Samari. I'm a 20-year-old black woman, and I'm wearing a brown long sleeve shirt, green pants, and white shoes. Hello, I'm Lily Davis. I'm a 21-year-old white woman. Um, I'm wearing a gray-brown turtleneck, my favorite multicolored cardigan, brown pants, and brown boots. Hi there, my name is A. King, and I'm a racially mixed gender queer, and I'm wearing black keds, a denim jacket, dark green pants, and a greenish shirt. Hello everyone, my name is Elia Roberts. I have green converses on, a long plaid skirt, um, a white tank top, and a brown cardigan on top. Hi, I'm Maggie Werner. I'm a 48-year-old white woman with fake red hair. I'm wearing black boots, black pleather pants, a maroon shirt, and a black velveteen frock coat. Hi, I'm Jared Whedon. I am a middle-aged white man. I have a brown tweed jacket, a gray shirt, blue jeans, and brown boots. And with that, I think we're ready to go. What do you say, Maggie? Sounds good. Welcome. We are so excited to have you here for this performance of Fault Lines. Now, as you can see, when we staged this live originally, the audience was seated right in the middle of the performance space. And now we welcome you wherever you are. One of the things that we try to emphasize with Fault Lines is that no matter where you are, we're all in this climate crisis together. So tonight we are your MCs. And as I said before, I'm Jared. And I'm Maggie. And these wonderful people are the student actors. Why don't you all introduce yourselves? Hello, my name is Anthony Bray. Anthony, where are you from? I'm from New York City. And what do you think your hometown in New York City will look like in about 50 years, you know, because of climate change? Yeah, well, I think due to the flooding that might happen in Manhattan, a lot of people are going to come from Manhattan to the Bronx, and we're going to see a lot of uh, movers into, the, into that part of the city. How do you feel about that? Hmm, I feel a little bit uh, hindered by this because of the fact that uh, so many people chose to live in Manhattan, but now they're moving to a place that's habitable just because of the fact that they, you know, don't have a place to live where they used to live. Whereas, you know, the Bronx has been treated as a lower economic place uh, as of late. I get that. And I'm Samari Brown. Samari, where are you from? I'm from Rochester, New York. And what do you think your hometown of Rochester will look like in 50 years because of climate change? I haven't really given it much thought, but I know because I live in the city of Rochester that the suburbs around me um, that are still a part of Rochester will do a lot better than what me and my family are going to do. Yeah, do you think you haven't researched it much because uh, you're like scared to see what the future will look like? Yeah, I'm not really ready to face that reality yet, but I know when the time comes, I'll have to be prepared. Right, yeah. Hi, my name is A. King. And where are you from, A? Westchester. What do you think Westchester is going to look like in 50 years because of climate change? I need to research it more, but I think because of the increase in storms that we've had in most recent years, like in 2012, we had Hurricane Sandy and it really hit the area, and in recent years, we've had a lot of storms. So I think because of that, we're going to, a lot of families are going to be stuck inside their homes and aren't really going to be 
able to go out and do the things that they normally like to do. Yeah. Do you think you'll still live there? Um, I think that um, my childhood home may be there. I don't know. It's up to interpretation because my parents are um, looking to find a new place to live just because all me and my brothers are all grown up. But um, I think, like, I don't know where I would live. I think I want to live somewhere on the East Coast, maybe Midwest, West Coast. I don't, I'm not really sure. Yeah, that's fair. I'm Lily. Hey, Lily. Where are you from? I'm from Essex, Vermont. Okay. And what do you think Essex, Vermont will look like in 50 years? Well, I think a lot of things could happen. I think there's going to be more flooding, probably more people, because it won't be too terrible there. Um, but definitely less snow and less colorful leaves in the fall, which is kind of sad. Hi, my name is Elia, City of Bridges. Fuck! Where are you from, Elia? <laughs> uh, we keep going. Hi, my name is Elia Roberts. Where are you from? I'm from Pittsburgh, City of Bridges. And what do you think the city of Bridges will look like in 50 years? Oh, um, I think for a pillow. I guess you guys will find that out later. Nope. You know, Maggie, this reminds me of that piece that you did uh, a while back, the one about your own hometown, what it might look like 50 years from now. Oh, yeah, the one I called Popcorn. Yes, that's the one. Two roads flanked by corn lead to my hometown in west central Illinois. Here in spring and early summer, the verdant fields pop up and prop up the Illinois economy. By 2050, the extreme heat in the Midwest will kill this corn, baked in its own breadbasket. Goodbye, corn. Hated symbol of my youth. Maggie, that was beautiful. Like, frighteningly beautiful. How did you manage to capture the complex nature of such an abstract concept? Truth is, I didn't. There's only so much that words can express, and there's so much more to the whole situation. I kind of get it, though. You just kind of pictured what you could in your head and then put it out into the space. Sometimes I think that's all you can do. Well, maybe we should try it. We can learn from each other here. Ah, OK. Give me a second. This could be really silly, or it could be awesome. Let's find out. Anthony stands and strolls to the crate of props while Eliya gets out of her seat. Anthony removes his leather jacket. He picks up a yellow safety vest and then puts it on. Hello, citizens of Zaldazar. No, I'm just joking with you. Hi. How's it going? We're on our way to Earth today. Thank you, alien citizens, for flying Space Amazon X. Behind me, you'll see the cruiser we'll be using today. I hope you enjoy it. I won't. Do I have any volunteers to get on first? Two black cubes await. Oh, come on. Don't be shy. It'll be an adventure of a lifetime. You could see the stars, uh, have a milkshake on top of the Milky Way. I don't know. Uh, how about you? Pointing at us. Do you want to? Yeah, you seem like an adventurous soul. Come on. Come on down. Sit right here. Sit right here. We'll go right into it. All right, great. So, I'm gonna be honest with you. As far as I know, uh, you know, I'm a pretty recent hire, so anything could happen. You could lose a leg, an arm, you could die. I don't know. Oh, and over to the ship's right, we see a dying star. He towers over us, stroking his beard. Wow. I sure hope it doesn't go supernova on us while we're this close to it. He recoils. Oh. Okay, well, I guess we better get out of here if we don't want to die horribly. <laughs> okay, he turns that? away. Jump into hyperspace! No, let's go! Everybody hold on! Are you holding on? He steps down. Whoa, that was pretty crazy. You doing okay? All right, now over to my right, you'll see my colleague, Elias. She will lead you on the rest of your tour. Stick to her like glue. Don't die. It comes out of my paycheck if you do. Go. Go, 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 go. Elia wears a yellow safety vest. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all aliens from across the galaxy. I am your Earth tour guide, and we hope you enjoy this newly post-apocalyptic planet more than the Earthlings here do. So, 
Welcome to Pittsburgh. Want to come follow me? She strides center stage. As some of you may know, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 50 years ago was once known for its metal manufacturing, hence its nickname, Steel City. And of course, its gorgeous Phipps Botanical Garden. Samari hustles to grab flowers from the crate, crouches with them, and collapses as Elia plucks them. Oh, what a tragedy. I, I'm sad to see it go, but... I want to give the last flower to, you know, you guys, the visitors, so please, please be careful. Elia hands the flowers towards um, us. Now, you may be wondering why we have glass separating us from the fellow humans. Students run off stage. Well, that's actually a trick question because they're barely even human anymore. But what corporate told me to respond with is, please don't feed the animals. So let's go follow me to our gift shop, shall we? Elia passes Anthony and walks to Jared. And over here in our gift shop. Jared mimes passing oh, a jar. Thank you, Jared. We have our very own jars of Pittsburgh air. She gives it here back. You go. Thank you. Fun fact, our air actually glows in the dark. Can someone tell me why? Do you have a guess? No? Oh, because it's actually radioactive. So please don't breathe too hard. Um, and over here on our upper shelves, we have small bits and pieces of our last standing tree we call Evangeline. Fun fact, you've actually been walking on her the entire time. Despite all disaster, she still survives to serve our very small Pittsburgh community. Or, I mean, what is left of it. So let's head over to our second stop. She scrolls to a new <laughs> cluster of chairs. Over here, there is a demolished building in ruins. Fun fact, this used to be our largest steel factory. It produced, hey! It produced tons and tons of energy that required the burning of coal. And I'm not sure what planet you guys are from, but here on Earth, coal and oxygen don't mix. So in less than a few months going out for more than a few seconds, resulted in coma, kidney failure, cancer, and the most common symptom, death, and what she'll be reborn and turn into one of these funny looking humans over here. I mean, come on, don't feel bad. They did this to themselves. We saved them, they owe us. So feel free to point and to laugh, but do so in a non threatening way. Or wave to them like this. Wave hi to the zombie, wave hi. So let's head over to our next stop, shall we? You guys enjoying yourselves? I sure am. But be careful. This dry and brittle plot of land used to be the beds of the world's most gorgeous flowers and plants known to mankind. The students stalk Elia. Um, hey, this isn't, this isn't funny. Ah, no! Ah, Jared! Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is not really where this scene is supposed to be going. I mean, I'm, so, I'm sorry. It's just a little, yeah. Anthony. Let's 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 help our tourists get yes. back out of this yeah. situation. I mean, I, this is just a little like. Yeah, I'm just, sorry. Yeah. It's just, I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit gruesome. Well, let's try something a little bit different. Twenty responses to climate change. What? Cursing. Fuck. Shit. Fuck again. Shit. Two. Avoiding any mention of it at all costs. Lily runs off stage and behind audience seating. Three. Laughing. <laughs> Samari doubles over. What a knee slapper. <laughs> Four. Recycling. Eli Amayim's holding a bottle. G -g 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 <sighs> Woo. Nice refreshing water. But I'm pretty sure it's recyclable. Oh, right here. <laughs> Just save the world. Bye. Hiding away from it. Abe runs and crouches behind the audience seating on stage. Peeks up and hides their eyes. Six. Summoning Satan to stop climate change. Anthony kneels and waves his arms. Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. Fire hazard. Can we get a seven? Pure rage. Students storm the stage. <laughs> Students circle Anthony. It's your fault. It's your leather jacket. Oh, it's fake. It's faux leather. Okay, okay. plastic. That's not any leather. Bandaged no. camel pants. Oh. Oh. It's made from bottles. Oh. In all my levels. All right, let's leave them alone. Can we get a nine? How about for me? 
protesting. <laughs> Guys, we gotta <laughs> protest. Little students march in a circle. Protest. My name is What's the chance? Please. I want some food. So I want some food. And I am a dude. And I am a dude. Who wants some food? So I'm gonna fight climate change. All right, we're gonna okay. 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 Let's, let's go for 10. How about 10? 10. Right in your, your feet to make a change. Say it again. I've tried. Dragging your feet to make a social change. Dragging your feet. Oh. Oh. Dragging your feet. Dragging your feet. Dragging your feet. It'll make a social feet. change in some way. Uh, we're gonna beat climate change doing this. There's a clear. This clear is the one. <laughs> Dragging your feet has on climate change that we obviously all know about. Okay, eleven. Okay, that's me. How about when it's cold, rather than turn the heat up, put a sweater on. Ooh, oh, that's yeah. Cool. oh yeah. Lily wraps Samari in her sweater. Oh, there we go. Are we warm now? Yeah. I feel so warm. And then wraps herself in a blanket. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. 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 Okay, 12. 12? Okay. Fighting on social media. Samari and A, mime typing on cell phones. Dear A, I think that your post about climate change was really stupid. Do you know why? Question mark. Because climate change does not freaking exist! Exclamation oh. point! Dear Samari, I think you should get an education. Ooh. Bye. Oh. Ooh. A, I actually went to Harvard University. Ooh. Ooh. Well, m maybe you failed all of your classes. Ooh. Oh, you want to take that? You want to take that? Clap back, clap that's back. A, you gotta that's go. a fight you gotta on keep my going. block. I did. Oh. Oh. I knew it. Thirteen. Thirteen. Causing a riot. Making a mess of the stage. Ah! Oh, what And here's where's the fire? This is the fire. We make go. some s'mores. Yes. Oh, oh ghost stories. Yeah. Nice camo. They lay out a blanket and sit on it. I think I hear something. What? What? Sounds like another number. Sea bear? Oh. <laughs> that sounds like a number. Another. What, what are we on? Jared, I was gonna ask you the same thing. Are we on 14. 15. All right, 15. 15. We're on 15. Yep. 15. Pretend like it doesn't exist. What are we doing? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? No, I think we should just quit. No, I think play. it was the word that started with C. The students stand and stare at each other. Camping? Cool. No. Crazy. No, not that one. Collab. Well, I'm just lost. What are we talking about? Um, uh, I'm talking about how the earth that. has always been the same temperature and it's never changing or anything. Oh, Especially yeah. not because of humans. So that sounds right. pretty yeah. 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 Lily that returns the blanket accurate. to the props 16. box. 16. 16. 16. Sleeping and hoping it'll go away. The students dive to the floor and curl into fetal positions. Uh, still warm. 17. Making a play about it. Samari stands like the letter C. I'll be climate change. <laughs> I'll be climate range. Lily mimes throwing Ooh. things at students who clap. Pete! Oh! oh. Sorry, oh. Writing apocalyptic literature. Lily kneels on the floor and mine is typing. They embody First, her imagery. The world started oh. to heat up. Ooh, it's getting a little hot then, in here. <laughs> all of the animals died. Oh, oh, and oh, then all the humans died. Oh. 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 And then you gotta have all the water dried up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, but, yeah. But, 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 just wait, just wait. On the other side of the planet, all the water was flooding everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was storms, bunch of storms, thunderstorms. Oh, yes. God, so many and storms. There were so many tornadoes all the time. 
so many tornadoes oh, that the world was chopped in half. Oh. And then the world split into two pieces and went and killed all the other planets. Okay, all right, all right, all right. 19. 19. 19. 19. Disengage. The students stand, hesitate, then exit. I'm leaving the place. Bye. You know, I was plugged into climate change, but now I'm Pulling out. that out. Pulling the plug, guys. I'm it's out. over. Guys, where are you That's going? Where's everybody going? Anthony stands alone. How did you figure it out? Crying. They collapse. <laughs> Anthony stands, walks slowly to the crate, and picks up an assortment of flowers, which he holds to his chest. Lily stands and wobbles towards Anthony. Oh my. Here we have the Adelie penguin. I'm so sorry on behalf of humanity. I understand that since we changed the temperature, your chicks end up hatching when food is scarce. I was also made aware that you're dying due to a reduction in sea ice, which causes your food source to dwindle further. Anthony hands Lily orange and blue lilies. I'm sorry. She wobbles away, then collapses. Samari glides towards Anthony. Monarch butterfly. Deforestation used to make space for agriculture and urban development have already destroyed substantial areas of your winter shelter. You didn't deserve that. No one does. I'm sorry. Anthony hands Samari purple flowers. Samari flutters her arms like wings and glides away. She lies on her back with the flowers across her chest. Elias stands and stalks towards Anthony. The tiger. Rising sea levels caused by climate change threaten to wipe out your forests and the last remaining habitat of the world's largest, most uniquely adapted tiger populations. I'm sorry. She swipes a yellow flower from Anthony. Arms and chest swinging slowly, she stalks away, lies down on her back, and holds the flower as though blooming from her navel. A rises and crouches towards Anthony. Green sea I don't know where to begin. Humans have devoted themselves to hunting your female counterpart. I sought violence upon you. And there is no justifying that. Anthony hands a white flowers. I'm sorry. They crouch away, bent over, arms by their chest. They lie on their back, flowers across their stomach. Elia gracefully raises her upper body, then stands and tosses her daisy to the floor. Time she speaks directly to us. After 13.8 billion years of glorious life, we are honored to lay you down to rest today. Through the millennia, you developed language, agriculture, and science that have changed the world. You've created art, made discoveries, and explored this universe to your dying breath. Although your accomplishments are impressive, it would be an injustice to omit your single-minded drive and determination. Not once did you think about what these explorations and discoveries might do to us, do to you. 
You burnt forests, destroyed ecosystems, obliterated species, and now you succumb to death as well. While we lie you down to rest today, the earth still lives. You may have taken many of us down, but the bugs and bacteria still survive and still thrive. You will be remembered by your landfills in blistering heat. You will be remembered. You made sure to leave your mark on this world. Maggie and Jared face Elias. I'm sorry. I, I am so sorry. I hate this part, Jared. It always makes me feel guilty. You know, I, I've, I've got this constant feeling like, like we haven't done enough, like I haven't done enough, and we're leaving this entire mess to them. I feel like such a hypocrite even being part of this whole thing. You know, I've got a single-use water bottle hidden in my backpack right now because I love flavored water. Sometimes I go through 40 a week. A week? I went and dug out a reusable water bottle just to carry it into rehearsal to signal my virtue. Well, I, 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 I feel guilty every time I drive the 30 miles to and from work every day. I mean, I'm saving up for an electric car. I mean, we are doing some things right, but I just, I just wish they would hurry up and take over running things. The students right. stare at Maggie and Jared. I'm counting on them to save us all. Lily stands to face Maggie. Sometimes I kind of forget that to some people, I am the next generation. Until recently, there hasn't been an extra generation yet living, so I don't know how I kept forgetting that it's me. I'm the next generation. I guess I just kind of thought that whoever my kids will be are the next generation and that I'm the current one. Samari stands. When all of the adults talked about how they ruined the earth for the next generations, I didn't really include myself in either group. I wasn't one of the adults who had ruined the earth, but I also wasn't a part of the next generation that it was ruined for. I was just kind of in the middle. The perfect spot where I wasn't to blame for climate change, but I also wasn't a huge victim of it. The perfect spot I was told. To, to make, make real changes. changes. To save the world. Looking back, I think in their conversations, though, I was the next generation. We were the first generation that would really have to answer for climate change. They would have to pull back, change our lives, make sacrifices. I don't know. Everything in those conversations always felt so final, like, oops, we ruined the world. Even though the people speaking were like in their 30s and 40s. Like, like you, you don't, don't think you have any influence on the world anymore? That was never weird to me until now. But it is kind of weird. Like, I was a child, and all the adults were talking about how terrible the world is and how terrible they feel that we have to answer for it. But, like, you didn't really do anything. Like, they didn't even really teach me how to make a positive impact myself. Like, why did I always feel dramatic whenever I was upset about climate change when I was little? It was it's just, just kind, kind of treated as a reality of life, I feel like. Like, if I tried to do something to help the planet, my parents were always like, oh, wow, that's wonderful. But it wasn't an expected part of living. It wasn't expected that I care about the planet outside of, like, composting and recycling and turning the lights off. But now suddenly there is an extra generation. There's little kids who see me as an adult and I haven't changed the world. I don't even feel sure I'll stop the cycle of ruining the planet. Or maybe, maybe it is truly just too late and we'll all be burnt up anyway. He spirals up from the ground with chopping arm gestures, then collapses to a crouch. The students join the gestures in a cacophonous movement to center stage. Maggie and Jared gesture aggressively from the periphery. I am very upset. Raging wildfires, killing hundreds with its dark head. Please help. I am. I am. I am. We lie in a boat where the manatees I live. live. And the manatees die. I cry for I live on the sky of the lunar. I am. 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 The MC's gesture gut stab. Darkness. The students hold flashlights and gather blankets and other items and spread them around the space. Samari and Delia scrub the floor while Lily fiddles with a piece of string and A cranks a manual charger. Anthony curls in the fetal position under a blanket. Thank you so 
someone clean up those wrappers, please? Anthony, can you please get up and clean up those wrappers? Anthony pulls the blanket up further. <sighs> can someone crank this thing for me, please? Hey, I'm trying to wipe down these floors. Is there something else you want me to do? Okay, can anyone else take it, please? A throws down the charger, storms to Anthony, and yanks off his blanket. What the hell? I'm cleaning because no one is helping. Why do you need my blanket? No one helped when I asked. You give me my fucking blanket back. I'll give you your blanket back if you help. What do you mean? There's nothing to do. There's everything to do. We need to clean and make food and melt snow and make some lamps and charge our fucking phones and figure out how we're going to get out of here because the school isn't doing any fucking thing to help us and we've been stuck here and there's so much to fucking do and I... God! Anthony grabs the blanket from A and lies back down. Fuck. You. Anthony rises. What did you say? Fuck you! You're lying there bitching about our situation, but you aren't doing anything to try and help it. I haven't complained about anything. What do you want about? I hear you over there muttering, and there's so much to fucking do, so why aren't you even trying Two to- Two days ago, you didn't care what we were doing. You were literally over Shut there- Shut the fuck up! It's different now. It's been five days. We actually need to start doing something if we want to get out of this mess. No, you shut the fuck up! There's nothing to do! We can't solve this. There's literally nothing to do. We just have to wait, eat, sleep, and wait for this to be over because there is nothing we think can do. Think of all the problems that people have faced throughout history. Do you really think they fixed it by waiting? Waiting doesn't do shit. It just makes things worse. We won't survive if we wait. Neither does spending 10 fucking hours attempting and failing to make an oil lamp. There is nothing to do. I'm sorry that no one has fucking fixed the power and that there's so much crazy fucking snow. Fuck! I'm cold. I'm hungry. It's been five full days and they still haven't fixed it. Hey, we just have to wait. I know that you think that it's my fault if we get fucking stuck here until we fucking die, but that is not my fucking fault. I cannot control the power and neither can you. I don't understand why two days ago you were the life of the party. So much fucking fun. And now it's all do this, do that, be bossy. We need to be productive. <laughs> You're just fucking scared. And you want to control this. But you can't fucking control this. So please, just let me sleep. Maggie stands, full lighting returns. Props and actors are scattered around the theater. Okay, that was a lot. Let's just stop, everybody. Actors, can we all just take a breath together? Can we do that? Me too, Anthony. Okay, we'll do a slow inhale, we'll hold, and then we'll release. Ready? Inhale. Hold. the students restore the space. I don't know, maybe I wouldn't be so overwhelmed with guilt all the time if I actually did something. But what is there to even do that doesn't require harming the environment or just buying excessively more shit? Well, there's a lot of things. You can go for a hike, take a dip in the lake, or drink some coffee. Yeah, all right, as long as it's shade brown. True. What do you guys do? Um, I usually like to go kayaking. Do you really? Yeah, That's great. Really fun. I like to write a short story. That's good. I like go to go for a jog. Nice. I like to ride bikes. Go on a bike ride. Yeah, okay. That's cool. Go bike ride to the store. Kill two birds with one stone. But then don't you just buy more stuff? You buy food that you need. Okay, from the, friendly All right, from the organic yeah. section. Anthony sets down a cube and leans against it. Samari dabs him up, then crouches they scour the sky. They duck. Captain's log! The year is 2070! The polar bears have risen up against humanity! They've teamed up with penguins to form the ultimate fighting force! They've. Oh, we took their icebergs! Now they want our land! Our story centers on some humans in an abandoned base, getting to know each other amidst the reality of the situation! What was that? Get me the fuck out of here, Private! We gotta go! Elias sit facing each other on the floor. Asparagus. But why? Because I miss it. Don't you miss, like, 
bacon or pizza? Everyone misses pizza. But for me, asparagus is like the knight in shining armor at my castle window. Um, sure. Totally. And boy, have you tried it? Grill! <laughs> have you seen a therapist? I'm not obsessed. I just mean I love a spare. Okay. I'm, I'm just kidding. Please, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. It's, I'm joking. It's, it's a, a joke. It's a joke. Please. Ooh. Good. I love jokes. Just me. I would kill for a glass of water right now. Maya hides her arms behind um, her back. Right. Me too. So, what you got there? A brushes Eli up. Black. Ah! Lights rise gently on the empty seats on stage. The actors emerge, strolling through the space. One thing that I would miss in an extreme drought are hot showers. A cold glass of water after a run on a warm summer day. Going to the beach. Swimming. Rubber duckies in my bathtub. Flushing the toilet. Clean skin. Long, hot showers. Making tea. Blowing bubbles. Music videos of rain coming down the ocean. Thunderstorm. Lily addresses us. What would you miss in an extreme drought? Taking a break from the exhaustive playground games as a child to take a cold sip of water before returning to play. Hey, when was the last time you all played a childhood game? Not for a minute. Time. Right. And it just makes me think of my favorite childhood game. Ever, ever told you my favorite? No. Oh. Come, we're gonna play. Get in a circle. Bubble gum, bubble oh, gum in, in a dish. dish. How, How many pieces, pieces do you wish? Samari evokes swinging. One time in my dream, my little arm swing from bar to bar, somewhere afar. Too many times I speed both of my knees. A collapses. On this jagged tree trunk. Then rises. Wherever it used to be trees. Lily swats the air. Three years ago, my mother told me to stay away from the bumblebees. My sister was young and she got stung. So I kill every bee I see. Elias sinks backwards. Four score and seven years ago, everyone yelled, how low can you go? My back reached the ground and I fell down. My burning back wishes the sun had went down. Anthony counts and hides his eyes. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready or not, here I come. Forever goes by, my throat is dry. And all I can do is sigh. Lily stands, hands on me. 600 degrees, no shade under trees, no water for me. Mommy, can we please leave? As the world turns round and round, I scream, but there is no sound. And I fall through the cracks of my world under attack. Bring my childhood back. From their knees, students grasp outwards, then rise and set two cubes okay. center stage. I don't really feel like my childhood is that much different than it is now, though. There was just different people in power. Yeah, like, the game hasn't changed. It's only really just the players. Yeah, it always felt like as a kid I had no power. Like someone bigger than me was always bossing me around. When it wasn't my parents, it was my brother. Oh, yeah. Older siblings are the worst. I'm trying not to take that personally. No, seriously. Childhood sucks. But sometimes I feel like I have even less power as an adult now. They're just doing a better job at making me feel as if I do. You think? Yeah. I mean, at least as a child, all I had to worry about was getting enough points to get some Mario merch. But now I got to worry about stuff like finding a job with health insurance. True. Well, to be able to afford housing. Well, I'm gonna tell you one thing. Once I get my own house, I'm not letting you stay with me. <laughs> That's cold. Lily sits with a game controller. A stands beside her. But Dad said, but that's how you can play when you messed up. Mess up? I never mess up. Then what's the sorry excuse for game play? A lurches back and forth to block Lily's view. I wasn't the one who 
one was playing. Lily grabs A by the wrist and drags them away. Stay here. Foul one, two. You know, you're adopted. What? You heard me. You're adopted. Now stay here and reconcile with that while I put my game in peace. Lily stomps back to the cube. Eliya observes. A shuffles to sit on the floor in front of Lily. You didn't have to say that. I just wanted to turn. Sorry, not sorry. Well, that's the psych play, so you have to let me. Well, dad is it your dad, so do I really? You and I are not the same. You're not from here. Why don't you just go home? I am home. What? I am home! You're right, I'm sorry. What? You are. A crawls to sit next to Lily. Yep, I'm really truly sorry. I shouldn't have told you to go home. Yeah, you shouldn't have. And you shouldn't have said I was adopted either. Oh, but I was just telling you the truth that dad told me. What? Dad told you that? Yeah, he told me that. You want to know what else he told me? No. What did he tell you? He stands. He also said that you need to start acting like you should. What does that mean? I don't know. He only said it right after saying a boy your age shouldn't be playing with dolls anymore. What do you think it means? I don't know! Why don't you go dwell on that for a while? Preferably in the corner. Lily resumes playing. A hangs their head. Let me play! Fine. You really want to play? Yeah! Lily hands A a calculator. Here! Lily resumes playing. A sits smiling. The smile turns to a frown as they slowly lower the calculator. Lily and A freeze. A, do you remember what scene's next? Uh... Anthony knocks on a distant cube. I'm here for the climate change interview. Oh, right. Just a second. Hey, can you grab my notebook for me? Thanks. Lily walks to Anthony. Hi, how's your day going? Hi, it's eh, all right, you know. How was yours? It's good. I'm kind of stressed a lot. Lily returns with a cue. Right. The three students Ooh, sit in a oh cluster. Oh my god, it is disgusting outside. Like, holy shit. Wow. Ooh, and it's hot, too. Ooh. So, thanks for coming, you guys. Um, yeah, but I think tomorrow's supposed to be better. I just have a few questions for you. Yeah, I think tomorrow just said it would be cloudy, not rain. Oh, sorry, Lily, you had questions for us? Yeah. Um, so the first question is, well, it's really kind of vague, but I just want it to be as open-ended as possible, so you can just kind of rant, OK, and just say whatever comes to your mind. And like. OK, OK, what is it? I'll say a lot. Okay. Lily takes notes. What do you think of when you think about climate change? But it doesn't just have to be think. Like, what do you feel? What comes to your head? Um, well, it's chill. No. Ooh, climate change is some fucked up shit. Don't put down that it's chill. Uh, okay, then what is it? It's some fucked up shit. That's what I said. It's really, really warm. Yeah, it's really, really warm. <laughs> no, okay, um, that's, that's bad too. Yeah, um... Uh, what comes to your head when you think about climate change? Like, I, I don't know, like polar bears or what else? The sun. Heat. Polar bears. Dying. Penguins. Dying. Anything else? No. Uh, Water. Mm-hmm. No. Mm. Mm-hmm. Coal. Mm. Mm. Floods. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sad. Fire. Dying. You know, I don't really think of dying so much as like 
sweltering, like, you know, like, or summer ever, forever and ever? Yeah, well, honestly, it feels kind of nice right now. What? No, I hate the summer. Yeah, I, I'm not saying I want summer forever and ever. I'm just saying, like, you know, we'd have summer and it'd just be like five degrees warm. What? No, I could never. I love the winter. Okay, well, what, what about... We'd still have summer or winter. It'd just be like five degrees, a little bit warmer winter. It'd be um, a nice winter. First of all, it's not how it works. It wouldn't be. The five degrees I want to move to but... Alaska. The only problem is it's like 5,000 miles away from anywhere, and then I have to fly around all the time. Okay, wait, 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 just a second. Alaska? Yeah. I want to move to like Florida or something, you know? Florida. Okay, got can nice focus beaches? back on the, the hurricanes? You can drive anywhere. What Alaska's do you think about when you like think of climate change? What do you think Guys. What do you think of when you think about climate change? I mean, at least the least thing we can say is that it's some fucked up shit. Elias stands. Sometimes I have to remind myself that my family's happiness matters. Because if their happiness doesn't matter, I don't know why I'm here. And my friends too. But when I think in the big scheme of things, I kind of feel like Earth looks better without me. I mean, I drive a car, I fly in airplanes, I take really long showers, I keep buying more plastic, I take away jobs from other people, I take up space, and I feel like the only way to stop doing all that stuff is to just stop. Just stop. Stop being here. But I have to remind myself that even if the world would be better without me, my family wouldn't be. And if their happiness matters, maybe mine does too. <gasps> oh my gosh, guess what I just- Samari stands and points at the other students. Are y'all hanging out without me? No. We're talking about the extinction of all mankind. Oh. Um, anyways, guess what I just watched on TV? What? what? The most ridiculous fashion show. Oh, Tell oh me yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you know what? We've seen it, but they haven't, so let's go show them. Come on. Can I have some music, please? Can I get a photographer? Christine stride to the no, hot box and grab various we can all be models. A spotlight flashes oh, the the Maggie's coming! <laughs> Samari drapes herself in a white blanket and steps to Lily, who is holding a microphone. Over here, over the shoulder! Yes! Oh, beautiful! Beautiful! Yes! It looks like our first model is making her way down the runway. Who are you wearing this evening? Je suis wearing Givenchy in Paris. And what would you like to tell us about Givenchy? I was at a conference last week, and we saw this huge screen with baby foxes on it, but guess what? What? It took about four of those to get this. Samari, strength. What? Mm. Four yes, baby foxes? Over here. Such a oh, valuable yes, cape she is wearing. Yes, That's incredible. Yes. Yes. Little squirrel, little squirrel, R.I.P. to them foxes. Yes. Samari discards oh, yes. her blanket and strips oh, away. Anthony stalks in wearing an earth-toned oh, crochet oh, blanket across his shoulders. Oh, his arms are crossed. Yes, yes, then glides yes, to yes, stop him to do yes, squats. Uh, 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 and our next model is making his way down the runway. He has some interesting modeling moves, but um, they are quite original, quite incredible, even. Wow. Uh, who are you wearing this evening? I'm wearing Nikkei. What would you like to tell us about Nikkei? Nikkei was designed in child factories in Indonesia and China, where children reject their schooling to make my clothing. How honorable of those children. Very honorable indeed. Yes, I'd say so. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, over here. Let's get a little twirl. Oh, look at that girl. Anthony lies on his side across the cubes in the center of the stage. Anthony cuts two squats, then tosses his blanket on top of his Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yes. A wraps themselves from head to toe in a dark plaid blanket. What do we have? What? They blow a kiss, then meander across the stage to Lily. And our next model is making their way down the runway in what seems to be a plaid gray cape. It is very interesting. 
What do you? Who are you wearing this evening? Levies. What would you like to tell us about Levies? Over one thousand workers sacrificed their lives to make this one particular piece of clothing. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. One thousand workers for one piece of clothing. I think that's a fair trade, don't you? Let's they make it more. So. Let's get a twirl. Yes. Oh. Oh, no. Yes. A stands and twirls. Oh, my God. The camera. The McBeans love you. Let's go. Oh, wow. Oh, I want one now. And drops their blanket on the pile. Maggie struts wearing a black velvet cape. She twirls, then glides to Lily. I have not seen this yet on the runway. And who are you wearing this evening? Chanel. What would you like to tell us about Chanel? Chanel has all the cost and inaccessibility of the high fashion brands, but with the carbon footprint of fast fashion. How incredible! Two birds with one stone, am I right? Wow. Thank you. Oh scowls, arms crossed from his skull. Maggie removes her cape, swings it in circles around her head, then flings it on the pile. I'm sorry, Lauren, can you please turn that off? Jared storms center stage. Look at this waste. Look, look at this mess. Do you know where all this crap is going to end up? A landfill. Yeah, I know. He cleans up blankets. I know I'm part of the problem. I mean, I'm not fashionable, but I wear cheap clothes and they fall apart and they go in the trash, or I donate them and they go in the trash. I, I read somewhere that something like 40 million tons of clothes Go to a landfill every single year. It's, it's overwhelming. Do you remember those pictures that Catherine showed us when we were talking about costume design? The one of the literal hillsides of clothing dumped on the shores of Ghana. The students stalk each other in a game of musical chairs. I mean, how can I forget? Remember the one that still had the tags on them? Maggie and Jared circle in the opposite direction. Yeah, and the cows and the people searching for food and all that waste. A removes a cube and exits the game. It's heartbreaking. I mean, I can hardly get that image of climate change out of my mind. It's the American dream. Consume and compete. Caught standing, Elia throws her arms in the air and then removes a cube. And repeat. Make things that break so people have to buy more. Break people while they make more things to buy. Lily sulks off. An endless cycle. Anthony shoves a cube off stage, then he and Samari continue the game. Miserable at work? Buy something. Get a promotion? Buy something. Feel like you don't fit in? Probably need to buy something. Lily snatches the last chair away, leaving Samari and Anthony standing back to back. They sway, swivel, Shift weight back and forth. My popsicles are so lovely. We're all just a bunch of frogs. A bunch of frogs in boiling water. My friends think so too. The only problem is, when it's too hot, they melt before I can fully enjoy them. Well, if you put a frog in boiling water, it'll jump out. I'm not saying I'd eat them when it was cold outside, but maybe when it was warm. But not too warm. The temperature needs to be just right. Well, if you put a frog in lukewarm water, it'll just sit right there. So tell me why I saw my dad raising the temperature in the house. He said it wouldn't affect the inside of the fridge. Well, yeah, but what if the whole fridge melts? Then what will it be, huh, Dad? What will protect my popsicles then? Well, if you turn the temperature up every so often, the frog won't even notice that the temperature has changed or that it's boiling to death because gradual changes go unnoticed. 
he just laughed and walked away. Like, what is that? Some people don't think, man. Now put us humans under the same conditions of an increasing climate, and what do you think will happen? But I do, which is why I turn the temperature right back down. We're all just a bunch of frogs in boiling water. Samari faces Anthony. Have you noticed? I have, and we need to do something about it. Let's do this. A and Anthony pull to Cube center stage. Samari pulls a laptop from a backpack. You got this. You're gonna have to. A, Anthony, and Elias sit around Samari watching. <sighs> Fingers crossed. <sighs> okay. One more time. Fuck. Elia turns away. All right. It's okay. It's okay. <gasps> oh, 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 oh my God! God. Yes, let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Did you finally happen to Disney World's main frame? You already know it. Oh. I finally shut down all of Disney's powers, so we should have no problem breaking in tonight. Yes. Woo. I see that in your hand. Are those celebratory drinks for everyone? Celebratory Woo! drinks for everyone! You get a drink. You get a drink. You get a drink. Let's make a toast. Of course. Elias stands back. You get a definitely get a drink. All, All right. right. A toast to friendship. To success. To loyalty. To good times. Um, to saving the environment. To blowing up Disney. Whatever. The students gulp, then slam down paper cups. I just can't wait like, any longer, guys. Let's get our Save the World outfits on. Oh, yeah. it. My up. favorite part. Samari right. rifles through the backpack and hands out ski masks. Elia sits her back to the rest. All but Elia put on their masks. Uh, you gotta go give Elia hers. Oh, yeah. Wait, this is Elia's. Samari removes her mask. She tosses another mask to Elia. Hey, girl. What's up? You've been quiet, like, all night. Elia stands. Um, I know. I know. Ah, uh, this thing. Um, I'm a, this. Hey. You know you can talk to me, right? From the womb to the tomb. I know. I know you know this. It's this thing. Girl. It's just. Can I just go home? Why? You missed the whole thing. I know. I know. I just, this. You know, Elia. This, I, I, this, you know, I love the environment. Girl, I, I just don't. This, Elia, just spit it out. Already. I don't think we should blow up Disney anymore. The others remove their masks and storm towards Elia. What in the blue fuck did you just say? I, I don't think we should blow up Disney anymore. You blow up Disney. Anymore. Dirty lying trick. Hey, wait, maybe she has a good idea, guys. Maybe no, no. We decided on this plan a long, long time ago. And guess who was at the forefront leading the group? Guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so? A girl can't change your mind. If you guys want to do it so bad, just do it without me. I can't do this without you. You're the one with the code for the bomb. You literally have to be a part of this. It's just too late already. Far too late. You can't back out now. I do have a plan, though. So, Miss Big Shot, Miss I Don't Give a Fuck, What's your big new plan, huh? Recycling a couple cans and calling it a day? Planting a tiny tree in your tiny ass backyard? That's not gonna do shit, Elia. Willie. So, what's the plan? Um, yeah, the plan. Um, guys, there's definitely, probably, no, oh there's definitely a plan. Just give me like a day or two. Better yet, I'll have one by tomorrow morning. Just wait and see. Elia strides away. Why, Elia? We trusted you. Oh, Lily, I just don't think we have to be all boom, boom, blowing shit up to get our message across. But no one is paying attention. Blowing shit up is the only thing that we have left. And we'll get media coverage. On Instagram, on TikTok. It'll be all over the news. And they'll finally see our message about corruption, hey. capitalism, and the environment. Hey, that's the thing. We can do things in a more peaceful way. We've already tried that. 
look at Greta Thunberg. People love her. But it's not like the world has stopped consuming. Elia, we don't need peace. We need revenge for what they've done. All the land they've destroyed were their stupid amusement parks and water slides. All the plastic crap they make with barely paid labor in China. I don't see you crying up how all their lives are miserable. Fuck Disney. We need them to see us. They're the real monsters here. Who well, vengeance is on your list of reasons. That's now how I get down. I'm out. You can't go anywhere. We need you to succeed. You're the only one. I don't one. care. I don't care. I don't care anymore. You can do what you want to do. But me, I don't need to do the most dramatic thing to make a damn difference. I don't need the media to see me. And... I don't need the news to see me because, because I don't need their external validation. You liar, you know it's For more Mario, than that. please, the people that care about my mission and message will join me and we'll do things in a more peaceful way. Hey, please. No. Just admit you're too scared. But please tell me, what's fighting fire with fire? Who are we gonna do? Please It'll tell get me. Our message we'll create across. more fire. The world is burning. People are dying, poor people are dying all over the world, and the people here don't give a shit. Do you know how many people went to Disney World on spring break? Riding rides, buying mouse ears, getting their photo taken on the top of Splash Mountain? People with privilege don't care because they don't have to. But they will think twice if Cinderella's tower gets taken down. You know what, Lily? Elia pushes past Anthony and Samari. Fuck your mission! Fuck your bombs and fuck your message! Elia! Don't be lying to me! She fucking deserved it! I know I may only be one person, but all it takes is one person to start a motherfucking movement! Elia storms off stage with a backpack and laptop. Samari throws down a ski mask. A and Anthony meander. I guess sometimes it just feels hard sustaining a movement because I feel so disconnected from any community. A throws down their ski mask. I feel that. But, I mean, I also feel community with you all. Maggie and Jared join on stage. I mean, you all know that I tend towards apocalyptic thought, but working with you all has given me some hope. Yeah, and remember, it's not over. I mean, we not only can't leave this for you, I don't want to leave this for you. I mean, I have really enjoyed working with you to talk about how we can make change and what that might look like for our community. Wait, I have an idea. Hear me out. What if we created a fault lines list of people that inspire us to keep fighting? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I like that, but it can't just be people. It should also be things. What do you mean? Okay, so I take a hike over by the Adirondacks every so often, and I'm hoping 25 years from now, I'll still be able to see the fall colors. Oh, yeah, I get it. You remember all that city paper that we got? What if we take them, wrote on the backs of them, and write down things that inspire us to keep working for a change, and we plant them and see if they bloom. That's a great idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, but how are we supposed to give it to the audience? I mean, we can't get the seed paper through the camera. Oh, shoot. Oh, maybe if they can grab like a piece of paper, uh, they write the same thing down, and they can put it on the refrigerator or a bulletin board or something. Yeah, well, that yeah. works. So what was the prompt again? Uh, uh, so we're writing down people, things that inspire us to keep fighting to stop climate catastrophe. Eli hands out seed paper to the company. The cast spreads throughout the theater, sits, and writes. an idea. What if we end this by sharing all the things that keep us going? Maybe it'll help to feel like we aren't fighting alone. You know, I love that. 
And maybe we could even keep it going online so that folks watching this can have the opportunity to join the conversation. Cool, but how? Um, we could take photos of our pieces of paper and they can too, and we can post them online so that everyone can should see them and we can tag them so everyone can see them from the tags. Yeah, like tag them like hashtag HWS theater, hashtag fault lines, hashtag reasons to fight. Yes, I'm gonna do that right now. Wait, this is a great idea. wait you guys, this is a lot for my old person memory. What? No, no, don't worry. It's it's all gonna go on the website along with everything else in the program. In fact, we'll probably let's put a QR code um, on the website. It'll take you right to the instructions. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, does anyone want to share this first? Well, I guess I'll share. I, I want to fight for all living things. I'm fighting so that the next generation has the opportunity to live. I keep thinking about all the people who will have to move away from their homes due to adverse weather. I'm inspired to keep fighting for just the crazy, beautiful creatures that are in the ocean. Hard to narrow it down to one thing, but I decided that I'd fight for the Illinois corn. Uh, one of the things that keep, you know, inspiring me is, you know, my cats. Shout out to Sage and Roxy at home. Eli, I blows a kiss. I fight for the individual. The individual whom has been wronged and pushed responsibility on by conglomerations that don't care about the environment. Conglomerations that continually do damage to our environment. Individuals that need to know that it is not their fault. That they can help, but not themselves. We all have to do it together. That is what I fight for. Maggie walks center stage. You guys are so inspiring to me. I want to take all that energy. Can we just end this by taking one last breath together? The company encircles Maggie. Do that let's all just think of like one thing that we can commit to changing in our own lives it can be like big or small it doesn't have to be for shattering the audience you can do that too think of one change that you can make to carry these conversations outside of the space now when we breathe in in a moment i want you to keep that idea with you so we're going to breathe in breathe in the possibility in everybody who's in the fight. We will hold, we'll hold on to the change that we're going to commit to. And when we exhale, we'll breathe out all thoughts of guilt, of fault, of inaction. Ready? Inhale. Hold. Release. Blackout. Inspired by the students in devising for performance. Lucas Amaral, Lillian Davis, Dariel Faulkner, Izzy Welgus, Joffrey, and July Winters. Written by the Company of Fault Lines. Directed by H. May. Director of Photography, Troy Tedeschi. Technical Director, Scenic and Lighting Designer, Ed Hallborg. Sound Designer, Kelly Walker. Costume Designer, Catherine Tarkalich. Stage Manager, Lauren Davidson. Assistant Stage Managers, Ryan Brady and Georgia Graham. Assistant Camera, Ryan Brady. Edited by Troy Tedeschi with performances by Anthony Bray, Samari Brown, Lillian Davis, A. King, Eliah Roberts, Maggie Warner, and Jared Whedon. Audio description and captioning, H. May. Child's voice smiles rose. Set construction, Ed Hallborg and John George. Dramaturg, Joffrey. Poster design, Sandra DeVoe. Digital program design, Chris Woodworth.
scan the QR code for a full digital program.